what is geography it is the study of an area as the name indicates geographic information system is an advanced technology which helps us to understand much more varieties of data of an area if gps is all about getting an accurate position of any object or a man in the surface of earth and remote sensing is all about collecting data of an object or an area in the surface of earth using sensors gis focuses on storing this data and displaying it for public use using gis in your area means if you are residing in a city you have to make a online map called digital map of that particular city then you can add more and more types of parameters for example the traffic flow the water table the atmospheric pollution etc you can add n number of parameters into this map and you can represent separately or combinedly hence you can understand and examine and analyze each of this combined okay do you get the point if you are residing in an area you can make a map of that city and add on values and parameters into it so that you can analyze it as a single file now obviously for making this map and for adding data into it you will need gis softwares or platforms like arc gis etc and the parameters that you are adding to the each of these areas can be obtained from remote sensing that is the relation with satellites with gis okay so getting into definition gis or geographic information system is a system for capturing storing analyzing and displaying of geospatial data in the form of maps you capture store and analyze and display it in the form of understandable very easy maps so you can analyze for everyone there are mainly five components of gis first one hardware and software data people and infrastructure or methods these are the components that jointly makes gis process possible as 90 percentage of the work of gis is done on a software hardware consists of a computer system on which software of gis runs for example monitor digitizer scanner and printer etc software is the one provides functions and tools for storing analyzing and displaying data arc gis arc info arc view autocad map micro station etc is used very successfully for making gis maps it's like when you learn autocad software you will obviously learn building drawing online when you learn gis softwares you would learn the procedures and processes of gis the tools and procedures for each types of maps will be different in different softwares arc gis will be different from arc info micro session will be different from arc gis etc okay data is another main component of gis it includes geographic data and tabular data geospatial data it consists of spatial data and attribute data these data can be gathered by the help of remote sensing spatial data is the description of location shape and orientation of geographic features for example in this image the bottom two are spatial data if you are considering your city your city map will be the spatial data you have to make digitized version of your city map and that is the spatial data on which all the data attribute data will be gathered on an attribute data is the one with climate hydrology bore holes in that image attribute is the parameter of which details you want to add to this map for example you have already seen you must have seen wheat cultivation of india in a map so we have some shaded portion in that indian map in some portion in here in andhra pradesh in tamil nadu etc so we understand where are the wheat productions or paddy production in that indian map and we understand the details similarly we can understand the basic knowledge about bore holes with plotted bore holes in the particular spaces in which bore holes are placed okay so that bore holes 
or in that map the paddy field cultivation was the parameter and the Indian map in that case and in here that land map is the spatial data. Okay. Next component people, it includes technical specialist, users and viewers. Technical specialists are the group of people who design this map, who design GIS and who add spatial data and attribute data into spatial data etc. Users are the people like engineers and scientists who uses this GIS data for their research and analysis. For example, if a researcher is studying about boreholes in an area, you can consider the previous map with boreholes in spatial data. Okay. And viewers are the common people who use GIS whose life will be a better place because of this better understanding of maps and attributes. Okay. Last component, infrastructure or methods. It consists of the well-designed plans and rules for the working of GIS. It includes the data standards and data standard operations. Okay. So these are the five components which comprise of GIS. So after collection, how do we represent this data in GIS? You can represent it in color formats and broadly it is divided in two forms, vector data and raster data. Vector data is a coordinate based representation like we draw on a paper. It will be comprising of points, lines, shaded areas, boundaries, etc. Okay. For example, you want to point out a well or a pond, you can just put a point and state that it is a pond or well. If you want to draw a railway line or a canal line, you can draw a line. Okay. So similarly, these kinds of data that on which most of the maps are made are called vector data. And, and the other one, raster data is a geographic space divided into grid cells and that are represented in it similar to a photograph containing each pixel squares with each colors. As you know, we, if you take a picture, in that picture there will be minute square spaces and these square spaces will be filled with colors, each colors of respected areas and this square area will be too less, hence we don't feel like a square area and feels like a photograph. In similar concept, the space is divided into grid cells and data is represented using these cells. Each cell contains a value. Point feature represented by a single cell. Line is represented by a series of cells other than a single line. Polygon represented by a group of cells in an area like in that image. So these are the representation of point, line and area of vector file and raster file representation. So in vector file, it will be points, lines and just an area that we usually draw on a paper. But in raster data model, you will be having columns, columns and columns for point, line and area. You will be filling columns accordingly. That is it. And as the number of columns or grid lines increases, as the area of single cell decreases and decreases, it will be feeling like a normal map. Okay. This is another one. Vector files are the bottom two maps with customers and streets of a particular company. And raster files are the celled portions with elevations and land usage. So you can represent, in GIS you can represent parameters or attributes with both files. Okay. You just need to add those files to spatial data and represent it as a whole. So that was an introduction about GIS and its components and re data representation. Next, we move on to GIS operations. How can we make a GIS map of an area and how can we add details to it? This is the order of GIS operations. Spatial data input, that is the map input. Second one, attribute data input and management. Attribute is the uh, characteristic that you want to input, for example, customers, streets, pollution, boreholes, etc. Third one, data display of much better understanding. You may be uh, needed to display it more understandably or conveniently. Data exploration and research, data analysis and finally GIS modeling. So keep all these six 
processes or operations in your mind because much more classifications will be there for a couple of them. So, we will go to classifications and subclassifications, but the major structure is these six operations. Okay. So, eventually we will come back to it, but be reminded that we have six operations. Okay. Let us move on. First GIS operation, spatial data input. Obviously, before setting anything, you need to input a map so that we can input parameters or attribute data into it. So, we want to examine what an area that we are concerned of or what is the shape of that area we are concerned of. Okay. Say we want to produce a data on pollution in India. So, first data is map of India with accurate coordinates that is the spatial data. So, you want to input that map of India into the GIS software digitized map. It is usually acquired from existing data or by creating new data. Existing data includes paper maps or digital maps. New data is created from satellite images, GPS data or from field survey. Okay. So for example, for India or a state in India or an Australian map, you will be having digital maps of a number of sources or you will be having paper map, maps. For a particular area that there is no particular boundary, you may rely on to remote sensing maps or GPS maps or even field survey. And this data is entered into GAs by the following methods, digitizing, scanning, coordinate entry and conversion of existing data. Okay. Digitizing is done using digitizer, it is an instrument and it consists of an electronic device with a handheld magnetic pen and a table upon which map is placed. It is very simple, you place the particular map that you want to input on that table and trace that boundary with your magnetic pen. If you are entering Indian map, you trace that Indian boundary with your magnetic pen and there will be a digital map of India in your GA software that is digitizing. So, that image is digitizer and tracing is done in two modes, point mode in which we are only pointing out some points for example, location of well, school etc. And in stream mode, you will be drawing actual lines or boundaries of a particular area. Point mode will be the one for attribute data input rather than spatial data input. In spatial data input, you will be more relying on stream mode. These are the errors in digitizing when you draw a line and we want to come back to a single point. There will be gaps, there will be overshoot, there will be spikes, duplicate, disconnection, etc. Okay. With the image you can easily understand. Next one. Advantages of digitizing. It is easy to learn. No skill is required. Attribute data can be added during digitizing. High accuracy. Disadvantages. Tedious activity require post processing and a slow process because we want to if we want to enter a number of areas, even if it is a small area, we will want to draw one more time. Any area that we want to include, we will have to draw it. So, that may take some time if the project is big. Okay. Second method that you can include spatial data into software is scanning. It is simply scanning the map using a scanner and it captures automatically like in any scanner that we can use and it is a rapid rate of input if there are 20 maps you can just scan 20 ones, 20 maps into it or else you have to draw each of the boundaries with a digitizer. Scanning is much easier but it requires manual editing after scanning. You may require to add some data into it and to remove some data out of it. So, there will be a post processing. Third method is coordinate entry. So, without any images, spatial data can be created by entering coordinates of each point. If you want to enter a uh, square area or polygonal area into our GIS map, you just insert coordinates, x and y and z coordinates into the map, into the software, you will get that area drawn in the GIS map. It is very costly, but it is very precise. Last one, conversion of existing data. Last one. Suppose you already have a digitized map of that area that you are considering, you can just convert it into the GIS format map. 
it's like we convert a jpg image into pdf image like just format change can create our data spatial data okay that was spatial data input next gis operation attribute data input and management attribute data reside as rows and columns most usually it is an excel sheet with rows with x spatial data and columns with that attribute considered suppose we want to add attribute data as temperature of major cities in india so rows will be the spatial data hyderabad mumbai kochi chennai calcutta etc the city names or the coordinates and columns will be that data of temperature with degree celsius and you upload that data into our software and on the particular spaces of cities you will be identifying this particular temperature today's temperature you can have a map of india with today's temperature aligned all over india so for entering you can either type manually or upload excel sheets so third operation after entry of spatial and attribute data there will be data display so that you can check the the attributes and spatial data if suppose you want to check the particular area that we have entered correctly or not or you want to check whether this temperature of that particular city or is correct or not according to your exact data you can check by data display data entered into the gis is displayed for checking and corrections it is visualized by maps with different legends and index based on the attribute data next one data exploration so you have entered and checked the data that you have entered with daily temperature of india with indian map and temperature values and then weather surveyor or weather researcher in australia or england can examine or explore this data in online and check and study and analyze for this for his purpose so he can study the general trend in data focusing on relationship between the data why it is happening and exploration like data classification data aggregation and map comparison can be made comparative study between each of the countries state world countries or uh, asian countries etc can be done for a researcher for anyone who want to know details about that particular data okay next one is data analysis it's an important one different kinds of data analysis can be done in gis depending on our needs so if you can explore the data that someone have entered and you want to find some information out of it so for data analysis in gis you need not print out take print outs of that maps and take them back to study manually you can analyze this data in the gis software itself for uh, for example if we are considering flood change or flood prone areas in a country you can analyze that flood prone predictions and you can generate mitigation measures suggestions and etc using data analysis in gis using the same data that you are analyzing so the different data analysis are vector data analysis raster data analysis terrain mapping and analysis view shed and watershed analysis spatial interpolation and path analysis and network application you know what vector data is and vector data analysis which is the important one can be done in three ways buffering overlay analysis and distance measurement buffering is a data analysis method after creating buffer zones with a specific width around a spatial feature if you have a map and buffering a point means around that point there will be a buffer area and buffering a line means there will be a buffer area along all the lines and like in the figure buffering an area will be like buffering area buffering an area around that area overlay analysis is the process of combining different layers to form a new layer so you can see that in that image and for example combining layer of roads layer of boundaries layer of water bodies to create a new layer of district or if you want to study an accident pattern of an area you can combine layers of roads accident points and the travel itinerary of an area for example the residence area and industrial area or commercial area you can connect all these layers to get an analysis and output and so that you can cal 
calculate a reason behind it. Distance measurements is the analysis to calculate the distance between spatial features. Distance between two petrol pumps or distance between town and airport etc. You can do that in the software itself with the help of GIS maps. Raster data analysis is the analysis of raster data, the cell data. It can be analyzed in many ways and they are grouped under the following heads. Local dat raster data analysis, the analysis on individual cells, the first diagram. Next one, neighborhood data analysis. It is the analysis of neighboring cells with the help of a point data. If suppose there is a uh, well or a pond on that point data, you can analyze with neighboring data. It's similar to buffering that we did on vector data. Zonal data analysis is the analysis on a group of cells. Global data analysis on the entire raster. Third data analysis, terrain mapping and analysis. It is analysis on terrain features like contouring, profiling, hill shading, measuring slope surface, curvature, etc. So basically, a topographic and geographic study will be carried out with the help of terrain mapping and analysis. Viewshed and watershed analysis is a particular set of tool that we use. Viewshed is determination of areas that are visible from one or more points. For example, if you select one point of a building, you can get the area from which that will be visible from that point of building. Usually, it is very difficult to calculate those kinds of viewshed area from a given map, even if from a contour map. But using GAS, you can find that out. Second one, watershed analysis. It is a similar tool to give the direction of stream network, analysis the flow direction and drain. Using this you can study the flood directions, drainage characteristics of a city, of an area or canal constructions etc. Fifth analysis method, spatial interpolation. It is the process of determining values of points using points with known values. Suppose you have a set of points with known elevation, from that you can get the elevation view of other points with unknown values. For buildings or in a particular city, if you have known and unknown areas, you will get the elevation and section values using one single grid. Last analysis method, path analysis and network application. It determines the least course and shortest path between two points. It is mainly used for logistics works, for transportation of goods, or transportation of waste etc it can be used very purposefully so for example shortest path between two towns for supply of a goods network or supply of any waste plant etc you can calculate by path analysis and network applications so these six points are just tools to analyze and get more value so that you can dig deep to it okay you so using all these sets of tools in GIS, you can study and research on much more bigger scale. GIS modeling. So after GIS introduction and GIS operations, we are moving on to our third and final topic, GIS modeling. And these are models that are used to represent a process, a phenomena or a system. These are just simulation or visualizing criteria or tools that can be used for better analysis that's it there are three types of GIS models binary models which shows some index values to indicate regression models which shows the statistical relations between different variables and process models which shows environmental processes so for modeling a particular data there are two systems of coordinates geographical and projected coordinate systems and this projected coordinate system is just like our four quadrant system of coordinate and geographical is much more about our globe that we do in our atlas considering earth as a sphere so the terms of these both coordinate systems will be already familiar to you geographical coordinate system used to locate objects on a curved surface of earth so locations of the points on earth is considered as points on the earth itself, points on a sphere. 
So obviously it is a three dimensional coordinate system. Position will be determined by latitude and longitude. As you know latitude is the vertical angle between plane of equator and radius drawn to the point measured at the center of earth. So as you can see in the figure the reference plane is equator. So that 55 degrees is the latitude from 0 starting from the equator towards vertical line. If our considering point is that point written as 60 degree east and 55 degree north that point latitude degrees 55 degree towards top that is toward north side okay so that is latitude and the lines of equal latitude are called parallels as you can see those lines parallels will be all parallel to equator next one longitudes longitude is the horizontal angle measured in plane of equator along the equator will be measuring along the equator between plane of meridian through the point and the plane of prime meridian. This prime meridian as we know already it is called as Greenwich meridian. It is a place at London. So the reference meridian is Greenwich meridian and measurement is taken along the equator and in that diagram that 60 degree is the longitude. So the point will be named as 60 degree east and 55 degree north. So with that value there only be one particular point and also lines of equal longitude is called as meridian. So for better understanding latitudes are the angles from equator towards top in the north direction and towards bottom towards south direction. So 30 degree north, 60 degree north etc. 30 degree south, 60 degree south etc. And those lines drawn are called as parallels. And the second one, longitude will be measured on leftward and rightward directions. Leftward will be west, 30 degree west, 60 degree west, etc. And rightward will be 30 degree east, 60 degree east, etc. And those lines will be called as meridians. Combining these two data, you will get grid of earth. So that you can represent the data or any point in the earth using geographical coordinate system. So this is another image for better understanding. So I hope you understood about geographical coordinate system. Second coordinate system projected coordinate system. It is used to locate objects on a flat surface like we draw on a paper with four quadrants with x and y coordinates. Object is located using x and y coordinates. Reference line is horizontal and vertical line. Center of map is selected as origin 0 0. So that typical values are given or in the image. So that is projected and geographical coordinate systems. Next topic map projection. It is a transformation of spherical earth into a plane surface. As GAS is based on maps and the mapping area is always spherical area as it is on the earth surface. So we have to project into a particular plane to get and understand it better and that is called as map projection. So the best example all you know is converting a globe of earth to a rectangular map like this that is called as plane projection. So whenever we convert or transform a spherical area into a plane surface projection there will be distortion or change of actual value that can be in area shape distance and directions in whatever method we do any of one cannot be avoided types of map projection it is classified based on quantity preserved without distortion and based on surface used for developing map. So there are n number of methods you can model or project a spherical area into a plane area but whenever this occurs there will be preservation of a particular quantity and distortion of some other quantity in the like in the last slide. So based on that distortion and preservation it is classified into four. First one conformal projection as the name indicates it preserves only shape and direction but area distance will be distorted. 
it is used for topographic mapping and navigational purpose for example mercator projection lambert conformal conic projection etc so you can consider this conformal projections or mercator projection etc if you want to calculate only the shape and direction of that area not area and distance second one equivalent projection it preserves area but shape distance and direction may be distorted it is used for spatial distribution like population map land use map etc so this area will be correct with respect to spherical and plane data but all the rest of the data will be distorted equidistant projection as the name indicates it only preserves distance all the rest will be distorted so as it the distance is correct with that particular map it is used for airline distance calculation and seismic map calculations examples are atlas map equidistance conic projection map etc azimuthal projection except direction area shape distance are distorted it is used for air and sea navigation so this four are the preservation based classification of map projections you can just identify each of them with their respective names conformal equidistant equivalent and azimuthal projections okay next one classification of map projections based on developable surface the last classification was based on preserved quantities this one is based on into what shape we are developing the surface into okay based on developable surface projections are classified into three cylindrical conical and planar projections by the name itself you can understand the concept with that image also cylindrical you will be developing it into a cylindrical method in azimuthal you or planar you will be taking a planar shape with respect to a spherical surface and in conical you will be projecting into a conical shape first one cylindrical projection earth is projected onto a cylinder which is then cut lengthwise and laid flat normally most of the maps are done like this this way the equator area will be more predominant than the polar areas it will be accurate at equator zone and poles cannot be shown in this projection parallels became horizontal lines and meridians became vertical lines for example mercator projection so as you can see from the image parallels that are latitude lines which are equal values will be horizontal lines and meridians which are lines with equal longitudes will be vertical lines after projection second one conical projection at this projected into a cone which is then cut lengthwise and laid flat as in the picture shown it will be accurate at mid latitude region like in north america or china russia etc okay parallels become concentric circular arcs and meridians become radial lines it's evidently clear from the picture itself that radial lines are meridians and conical arcs will are parallels last one planar or azimuthal projection it is projected into a plane which is placed at the north or south pole map will be circular in shape parallels become complete concentric circles and meridians become radial lines so obviously in this type of projection equatorial areas cannot be found it will be more prominent for polar areas so that was about gis and we are stopping here and do not think of gis gps and or remote sensing as a method related to computer science or information technology etc it is much more related with civil engineering than you can think as technology have reached a very high point we have to use gis or gps or remote sensing at some point of our engineering life it is much more related to civil engineering than any other stream if suppose we want to build a dam you cannot build a dam nowadays without considering gis and remote sensing with the images you will study the flow of water 
and then with the images again GAS and other remote sensing images you will study the stability of dam etc. So this goes on. So do not ever consider these kinds of technology aspects as not civil, civil based. It is much much important for civil engineers. Okay, thank you.